it was about survival, really. It was like I, I had a choice to make: either, either be the guy who gets the piss taken out of his shirts mm. and don't don't be that guy who who might get the girl that you want, or fuck you. Mm. I'm wearing whatever I want to wear, mm. and 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 I'll, I'll and I, I used to get into a lot of fights, basically mm. a lot a lot of fights, and and um that and 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 um. That was a that was a period of time which I look back on and it was it was all about identity. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the app store for free today. Music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Hit the elevator button, here we go. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, central London, or central as you need to be, choose to be, you want to be. You don't want to be anywhere else, come on, come on, son. 450 plus episodes, you should know better. Um, big shout out to the sharers and carers, the people that have been supporting from the jump. We see you, those of you who just got involved now, there's a, there's a bunch to listen back to. So, uh, And they're evergreen as well. A bit like my guests most days. Um, anyone has got a television app, hold tight. Free download, iPhone, Android, Android free sports and arts. Um, whether it's mixes, podcasts, or mini docs or big docs, it's all there for you. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, the Mighty Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, and yo, in a world of bootlegs and bona fides, there are a few people out there that make the efforts and the choices in life to uh, hunt down the unique, the unique brands in fashion um, and sport them, champion them and put them on the backs of the people that you know and love. Uh, we're talking the opposite end of street culture um, in the fashion world. Rich, the name of the company, and uh, uh, they are supporting a lot of high-end brands in the street culture world. Highs and lows, conversations in fashion and more. It's Rich himself. How are we, my brother? Yes, mate. Yes, mate. I'm loving it. Buzzing. I'm, I'm just like, I've seen this so many times and I'm here. Yeah. I can't believe it. You really? I, I, it's, I, honestly, no, I think it's amazing. Oh, How thank you, The you. setup here is I can't even, uh, like I was saying a minute ago, I spend my life making things. <laughs> my job <clears throat> is making things look cooler than they actually are. And... It's just an art form, isn't it? So, so I mean, what you've done here is just brilliant. Like, Thank you. I was expecting, honestly, I was expecting sound men, assistants, cameramen, DOPs, what, and for anyone who's n- not seen behind the scenes, this is all you, right? <laughs> this is like, there's no one else here. It's just us and... I think hats off oh, to you, m- mate. Much respect. Because, like... Thank you, my well, brother. I'll do these things on a day-to-day basis, and uh, the bigger the budgets, the most more ridiculous the team gets. Mm. You know, you need two assistants, blah, 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 three assistants, four assistants, a lot of equipment you don't even need. Mm. It comes out of my pocket half the time, and it's like, fuck. Yeah, it's brutal, isn't it? You only... Re- this, is a, this is, like, as raw as it gets. It like, is as raw I'm, as it I, gets. I think I remember... <laughs> I think I remember... Um, Watching the, the Jimmy Lacoste uh, interview with you, mm-hmm. and he was saying, "I love, I love uh, everything about graph culture because it's the rawest, yeah. th- rawest um, culture there is, right? The rawest of all, yeah, for real." And I think this, I think the same thing about skateboarding, about BMXing. It's like if you want to do something, you just go and do it, right? Mm. If there's ramps or not. <clears throat> big, up, big up bombs at this point. Big up bombs. Come on. Yeah, 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 and um, yeah, because. Uh, there's a few. There's a few people I've worked with recently who've got that mentality, and, and once you've got that mentality, whether it's mm. uh, graffiti writing, you want to do it regardless, right? Whether mm. you're allowed to do it or not, whether your parents let you do it or not, whether you've got your own kit or not, mm. you're gonna get it done. Mm. And that is, if you can, if you can package up that mentality and put it into wherever you do in life, whether that's running a business, whether that's um, running a family, but this. This here, mm. your your mentality, that whatever that mentality is, 
is what you've got yeah. in this place. You know, there's no one helping you, no handouts, no, no, yeah. Well impressed. Thank you, my bro. Listen to that. Yeah, oh anyway, yeah, yeah. Like an that's the end of the show. Big up. <laughs> I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, and yeah. and I think we do share a same attack. We are from the same era and, and uh, generation of of a time. I think the. I mean, we'll definitely stick to the idea of. We'll definitely chat about the uh, advantages and disadvantages of a twenty twenty three fashion world that have expectations of high uh, technological products and keeping things to spec and yeah. keep, keeping up with the Joneses. But um, yeah. I wanted to talk to you about, I wanted to talk to you first about uh, cycles, cycles in fashion. Yeah, yeah. Um, As you can see, if you're not uh, listening and you're watching, you're not watching, you're listening, I am wearing some drip right here, courtesy of Rich PR, hold tight, um, Al <laughs> and Coy and all the rest of the crew there. Um, he is a family, it's a Brixton family, and they've been there for a long time. You've been able to see trends, buck trends, and look at them closely. What is the cycle of fashion about? So, I mean, well, it's a fucking, comp it's complicated, but then it's not complicated. Mm. At the end of the day, kids want to wear something opposite to what their parents are wearing. Mm. Or kids want to wear the opposite to the people that are in control of their lives, whether that's teachers, whether that's news reporters, whether that's police people or, or, their, or their parents. They're looking for something else, another, another um, identity. Mm. And, and, and quite often they create a little bit of their own, like you do, you know, you wear uh, pork pie with DMs and you, you're confident enough to like make up your own identity. But most trends come because they're looking for subcultures that have been before. Um, so um, let's say, you know, the rave generation, they look towards, um, you know, sportswear, they look, look towards... Brands like Aless, Umbro, mm. um, they looked at Feeler, they looked at it was comfortable, it was it was active, but they weren't doing sport, they were they were raving. Mm. So that became a thing. Now the the cycles happen in periods of time because no one wants to like if even if your dad was a raver, you don't want to look in your dad's wardrobe and it's too much like low hanging fruit. You need to look about a 20 you need to skip a generation basically so like you need to you need to really look a bit further than your dad for inspiration so you might look um uh like you might look um at football casuals or you might look at um old school hip-hop you might look at jungle you might look at but you won't go as deep as teddy boys you might you won't mm. go as deep as um, so it's kind of like a 20 year cycle basically like you've got the Culk and I on yeah man which is nice which, which I used to wear as a kid yeah and, I mean the, the reason why I've managed to have a job in fashion or have a have a business and a career in fashion is because basically all the brands that I used to wear whether that's Fila whether that's Stone Island or Umbro or whatever it whatever it was, they've come round again and again, and I've just liked them again, mm. and I, and I've just wanted to sh show the next generation or the f generation that follows that how that can link with youth culture, maybe twist them a little bit. I don't know, man. I mean, it's 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 a real kind of complicated. I mean, people always say, "Oh, what's in fashion, Rich?" What's in fashion? Mm. You know, a lot of my mates' dads say, oh, what's in fashion? But it all depends also <clears throat> on your confidence level. Mm. Like... Yeah, hell if, yeah. If, if your confidence... I could tell you what's what's popular. You can look in the charts and see what... See what, uh, you know, there might be uh, 10 different types of music in the charts mm. and they're all wearing different things. They're generally all wearing... You know, X, Y, Z. Do you study that? Do you watch yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, all, I mean, it's like I said, it's... I don't do it purposely, like, 
I've got to revise tonight for for no. For my I job. must go and study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it, like I said. I think I said it earlier. I, I, I've just sort of fine tuned the art of. I didn't realise I was doing it as a kid, but it's like Sonic or Pac Man when they're when they're going around collecting the collecting the stars or the coins or the little mm. things. If I'm going for a wander in Brixton. I'm just subconsciously like collecting the coins, like Sonic, wow. looking looking at someone who's wearing uh, Jordans or baggy jeans or skinny jeans or wearing a wearing a bowler hat. Oh, that looks good. Or I see someone. Occasionally, I'll see someone. Shit, he's wearing Ugg boots and mm. he looks good. Oh god. And, or, or, and you know, it's just it's just, just attention little, to detail, little little things that yeah. are, I'm, you know. He's tucking his shirt in, or he's got his chain mm-hmm. outside his. And I think, wow! And it, yeah. it just—you're looking for the most confident people. They all do the, the time. littlest of things, almost. Yeah, like, like, like. I mean, it's you go to a gig or you go. To, I, you know, always would just look out for people that um, are confident enough to push, push their little style tweaks, whether it's collars up or whether they've, whether they've done something different mm. just a little bit you know there's always going to be a tight group of people in there in the in the circles but there's one person always that has just sometimes by accident gone oh okay um i'm gonna wear shorts over my trackies old school like rocky mm-hmm. style and it's like well that could be a thing you know i'm gonna, I'm gonna mm. wear school umbro shorts with deck shoes and it's sometimes it comes from nowhere Whoa. And it's and it out. and it's like, but a lot of the time it comes from. So say if you're an artist, you just get signed. So when I first started my career, uh, an artist would get signed by um, Universal or Polydor, and then they they'd want to do press shots, and then they'd, I'd get the phone call or got to do a press shot with this band or that band or that artist, and then I would have the freedom to go. Fuck it, they haven't really got a look yet. Mm. So I could, I could, if I wanted to, I could. Oh, let's go one glove. Let's, That's so let's, cool. Let's go eye patch. Let's go. And and sometimes you turn up and they'd go, oh, "I'm fucking wearing that." But other times it'd be, it'd be really interesting. Like I remember doing, um, the ordinary boys. Like oh way, my goodness, way, the ordinary way, boys. Way, wow. way, way back. Like there's some p- people I used to dress. You know, they some people they're still alive, but. Dead to the world. Uh, as you might add, uh, this is how we first met back in the mid noughties, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and you're not Big dead. Up. You're yeah, here. I'm here. It's like, like uh, <laughs> so. Yeah, back in the day, I was a stylist, so like, um, it just came about from just being the, the fashion guy in my group, mm. and um, my mates would take the piss originally, but and then eventually, like, I'd get more girls, mm. and. They'd be like, oh, we're, no, going, he's we're yeah. going to Iron Apple for two weeks. Which, what do you reckon? Like a couple of couple of loud shirts, you know, what nice. sunglasses shall I wear? Or what, you know, and it was like, okay, cool. I was, and, and I just got confident. Do you know what I love about that? I'm just sorry to interject, but sorry. dude, you're so, for want of a better term, rock and roll. Like it's different with fashion, and there's a lot of, there's a lot of people set in their ways or stereotypically yeah. thinking that oh a person is like that you are like the complete fucking opposite dude you're like fucking rock stars nah, genuinely nah. genuinely, mean, genuinely. It, 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 it ultimately some people want to be in fashion because it's a thing to say or it's almost like a hobby like a flower arranger or or a seasonal I don't know. yeah for me it was just like i'm i'm i moved from southampton to I've moved from Wales to Southampton when I was really young and I was really shy. And and um, I moved to this uh, school that was a little bit rougher and everyone was more confident. Mm. And I thought, and I had a Welsh accent, I thought, fuck. And I had to lose that straight away and fit in real mm. quick. Um, and everything just seemed more modern. The girls were nicer and the boys were cooler. Mm. And then we had a school disco and, and I was like, fuck. Oh, I never had a school disco in Wales. What's that about? And my mum and dad were brilliant, but they were very unmaterialistic. Not like, you know, it was just teacher, engineer. And I was like, what do, what do I, I haven't even got any clothes, whatever. My mum bought me this shirt and it was like long sleeved and it had repeat pattern um, 
temples and Aztec warriors all over it. And I mm. thought, fucking hell, that looks, that looks, up. it was like, that's so loud. It was so loud, right? And I thought, I didn't even think at the time, like, I'd never really experienced, I hadn't really experienced piss taking or fitting in properly, but I thought, I'll just wear it or whatever. I got to this school disco and I had the most attention. This shirt, people were like, <laughs> I love this shirt. <laughs> love it, I love it. And I didn't, there was people dancing, doing the worm and all this sort of stuff. And I didn't know any of that. I just stood in the corner and I had this loud shirt on. But people were like, I love your shirt. Mm. I love it. And from that minute, I must have been about 11, I was like, oh, that's, that's the thing. It's about like, me. For that is, that's for yeah. me. I, I, like, that is, that's my bait. And, and always, for me, I'm very actually and naturally an anxious kind of, uh, I don't know, not a, not a super loud person, like, look at me, blah, blah, blah. But So I knew from that minute on, my exterior was my, was my way of communicating to mm. other people. I could, I could communicate to someone on the other side of the dance floor, whether that's a girl, whether that's my enemy, whether that's someone who, who wanted to fight me, through my clothes. And it's like my, my uniform. And, and, it, and so I, I just, that's all I ever knew. My, I'm very dyslexic and communicating v verbally. Sometimes if I'm under pressure, I'd, I'd be a bit, you know. But I just knew that if I sorted my outfit out, I could just turn up somewhere, boom. And, oh, that's and, good. and that just became like addictive, mm. you know. And, and, um, and it would... You know, you enter a room, blah blah blah, and it and it just became. And I, I just used to love um, girls' attention a lot, a lot. And 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 then as I got older, um, the more girls' attention, the more enemies you had. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of like the more pe the more you hierarchy know, business, the hierarchy business. And it was it was then anyone who knows me from the you know like seventeen to to about twenty four. Uh, it just had to just, it was about survival really. It was like, I, I had a choice to make, either either be the guy who gets the piss taken out of his shirts mm. and don't don't be that guy who, who might get the girl that you want or fuck you, mm. I'm wearing whatever I want to wear. Mm. And, 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 I've, I've, and I used to get into a lot of fights, basically mm. a lot, a lot of fights and, and um, that and, and, and um, that was a that was a period of time which I look back on and it was it was all about identity like mm. what car I had I was like a, a boy racer car and it, like looking back it's really? just about okay. all about all about identity I had mates that were hooligans I had mates that were a lot more into the rave scene than I was I was but um, mm. I had friends that were I was just I always just rode a tightrope mm. of. Uh, I don't want to be too much of a hooligan that I'm going to get put in put in jail. I don't want to be too much of a raver that I'm going to just be a zonk of life. Yeah. Oh, I didn't want to be too much of a stoner that I can't do. Mm -hmm. So I just always I was that guy that kind of like tiptoed it deep enough yeah. to be in it and then move on to the next thing. So I knew enough about that. I knew enough about that. I knew enough about that, whether it was breaking or whether it was um, art or whether it was f boxing. Yeah. I just... Go into it, Culturalist. come out of it, and Mag magpie taking. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I love, I love them? all sorts of culture. Whether I, I don't even, whatever it is, mm. whatever it is, whether it's um, bare knuckle fighting, whether it's Morris dancing, well, mm. it's like I just love everything. Sometimes, as a stylist, I would, I would have to do um, a band, and that's the thing. A lot, of, a lot of time now, stylists. Mm. I'll say, what are you into? And they'll say, oh, I don't like, oh, I don't like dance hall, or I don't, oh, I don't like rave, or I don't like, I don't like dance music. But you have to be into everything. Yeah. Because I used to get a phone call, one minute I'd be dressing uh, <laughs> a, a punk band, yeah. next minute I'd be doing, you know, I used to do all sorts of stuff. It'd be brilliant. One minute I'd do, uh, do the streets, which mm. was good. Um, and that was like a dream. Yeah, well, I don't know, it sound like a dick, but it was like, mm. it was it was something I was a into. Big deal, yeah, I was, right. in, I, you know, I was doing shoots with 
with uh, Mike, Mike Skinner, obviously, and, and Plan B, I did a lot of stuff with him. Mm. But then one minute, I get called for a job, I've got to do the Towers of London. Big uh, up, well, Rev. Not, <laughs> Big mate, up, honestly, Rev, I, I don't even mind them. Like, no, I, they I were actually, great, man. I actually loved them. Me too, at the time. I really at got the time, them. I was like... <laughs> but it was something that I, w- I wasn't particularly into, but you have to get into it in order to do it. Mm. And I, I remember being, at one point, they were fucking... They were they were doing they were really cool at one point there was a point doing until rounds, until man. the until the media sort of jumped on them, um, I thought I honestly thought they were going to cross over to America and really kick do some something ass. like cult like at yeah. one point because it was like they were doing something that was no one was doing no. I just I I just don't you know so I I was just that guy that you know, someone someone's doing something different. Um, I just got the phone call. It well, I was I wasn't the guy who did the, um, you know, the girls in heels, or I wasn't the guy that did um, uh, any any kind of flowery stuff. I was the guy that did the youth culture stuff, and still am, mm. um, uh, you know, yeah, still on then. lads stuff because mm. I was doing like you know you'll know I was working on the lads mags, um, and at the time there wasn't really that many, there wasn't really that many guys like me doing fashion you had stereotypes you had so so let's just one second because uh when we say lads mags affectionately yeah. uh for those of you that uh were born in the late 90s you would definitely not have really picked up on the energy that became uh magazines such as front uh fhm nuts loaded uh and the like wasn't it i mean this was an yeah. era of um mild <laughs> pornography for yeah, really honest yeah. really yeah 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 fronted I mean, as a as a as a lads mag yeah yeah well i'm mean, hoping there's some people out there that might remember it because sometimes i'm like that guy off of only fools and horses you know that say, oh you know those days those <laughs> days those days of the lads mags <laughs> it's like um yeah you know like um my growing up lads magazines before the internet, mm. if you were a lad, the only way of accessing um, information or news about um, computer games, films, girls, football, mm. all the stuff that you might see on Pop lad... culture, basically. Any, anything that you'd see on a lad bible or a mixture between... Mm. Um, pff, and in the middle of it all, there was girls. It was what you call glamour, glamour girls. Page three meets... Um, yeah, page three meets Pornhub. gig guide and meets porno. Yeah, it was, it was fucking crazy. It but uh, but um, magazines were a business um, and in order to get advertising in that paid, um, they had a fashion section. And I remember thinking, all through my teenage years, I mean, thinking that would be my, my dream job, like literally my dream job, um, be the fashion editor of a lads mag and then... So cool because you actually did it, dude. It, it was like, it was. I remember like going to the shops when I was 15, 16, 17, eight, well, Eric, buying Maxim, buying mm. all these things and um, looking at girls. And, and it's like, it was like the, it was, a, it was alternative. No one wanted to buy a porno, yeah. no one wanted to buy a book on gangsters. Mm. Um, it was just all the stuff that makes lads tick in one little magazine every month and it was selling at the time like 200,000 copies a month which is like equivalent to well I mean fuck it, I mean, if you've got 200,000 followers it's a big yeah. deal now but who big and they were fucking, commercial I mean I run those names off pretty you know casually but th- th- it's not for the want of reading them it's that they were so prominent yeah, yeah. in at, the public at the, eye at the time it was probably equivalent to like Hypebeast yes, Complex exactly. ID the face exactly right. and it was right. uh, in pop culture if you were a girl you wanted to be in them um if you were a brand you wanted to get in them mm. and and um and, and i f- just through just through knocking on doors and, and literally s- pestering i've managed to get the job as Incredible. fashion editor and um and it was lo- it was a it was it was literally a dream like i'm, I'm not i'm not just being a dick it tell was, us the glory sto- tell us fucking, the stories tell um us the- i mean Go spicy, go was, spicy was, as you want. It was nuts, man. I mean, there were any day on the magazine, you could have girls walking around with no top on. You could have, if it was someone's birthday, there'd be a there'd be a, there'd be a stripper definitely on a desk. Um, people drinking at the 
their desk, people doing drugs, people people sleeping under their desks. Every 10 minutes you'd have, whether it could have been Lynx bringing in some husky dogs with the girls in bikinis, you could have uh, Pepperami coming in, a 10-foot Pepperami. It was just, it was... <laughs> Hedonism, it, it carnal was, knowledge. It was, it was <laughs> fucking chaos. But the only saving grace was... When I, I did go to uni, even though I didn't get any grades, that was that was um, uh, university for me. I didn't learn anything. The only thing I learned at uni was to do work whilst hungover, whilst going out every night, whilst being <laughs> distracted by girls, but whilst being distracted by yeah. everything. So when I first got to the lads mag. Um, and actually, my editor, Ian McSorley, legend, yeah, um, Ian. he said, oh, because we've got you on a bit late, you've only got, I think you've only got 21 days to do this issue rather than a full month because the ex-fashion editor, blah, blah, blah. Met. And I was like, fuck, I've got to actually do something like, I can't remember, I've got to do 40 pages of fashion whilst all this fucking craziness is going mm. on around me. Like, people doing, it's just... It, it was you go to the public lunch standards like um, it was just fucking crazy. And girls, models would come in and then they would, they would, they would, they would flirt with you because they wanted to be in the mag. So you'd have girls, models coming in, yes. sitting on people's laps. Even the interns that you got, they were often models because they wanted. To get in the mag, very liberal. So it was, it was really, really fucked up. And now it would not, not. It wouldn't fly. You had like pages like the cunt list. Oh, I can't say that. Yeah, exactly. Probably. Well, I, mean, you, podcast, my friend. I mean, I mean, you, you had. Rough. We used to, we used to make interns do things. We, it was really like fucking crazy times. And I'm sure at one time, maybe in the future, there, there, there'll, there'll be people sitting around and. I think oh we should, like uh, you you look at have you seen the dirt on Netflix? Yes, uh, uh, Motley Crue. Motley it, Crue dog, it was yeah. it was like the magazine version of that. I know it sounds like <laughs> try, I speak to my kids now and I'm like I you don't to understand. Any, I spent to you don't understand <laughs> like fucking why does someone realise this is it, uh, but uh, no one even knows what fucking magazine yeah, is yeah, yeah, let yeah. alone a lads mag. Yeah. So so I used to do the fashion pages and what happened was people. Uh, in bands or, or or whatever, they didn't want some rich posh girl to do the styling. They didn't want, um, uh, you know, someone turning up. They wanted a real deal. They wanted they wanted someone yeah. who was a lad. So I would often get called, even though I was working there full time. Um, I'd get called. Oh, this this band wants you to do the style. Mm. Just just sort of like laddie indie bands that that you know mm. like the enemy or the, the, the I, I rate the, the enemy yeah, as well. They're another like, great band, man. Le, le, twang, um, twang legends. As well. yeah. um, a lot of them become good friends. Like Phil from the Twang, he, he come to my wedding. You know Big what I mean? The twang, I rate that. It should be way more famous than, yeah. than what they what totally. they were. But you know, they, a lot of a lot of those come and go. Like I said earlier. There was no social media then, so all those days, they may as well not have happened. Mm. Like I say to us, I could say, oh yeah, yeah, I did. I remember there was a band called The Automatic, and they had a track called The Monster. I was that was doing, a tune doing, as well. Doing stuff for them, they were like number one in the charts, and it was like fucking. But no one knows. Yeah, they're like. You know what I mean? There's got to be. We need to set up a club night where we only play those kind of <laughs> from that era. I think they still do gigs. You know, a lot of these bands. I mean, I know the Twang do. They're still big in Birmingham. They do like these big Christmas parties. It's, but uh, the View. Do you remember the View? The view yeah, 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 yeah. Band, I remember. Man. I remember it was like that's that's when I was a stylist. You know, when mm. when you know, I still do the odd bits now and then. But those days, the Holloways, the View, mm. the view there was. There's all bands like oh, that. It just it was, oh, um, and and uh, that's it. You know, you were you were in the mix then. We yeah. were sitting on the magazine. Oh, who's going to be in the issue? Who's going to be in the issue? This, that, this, that, this band, this girl on the front cover, and you were always in the mix. Mm. Like I'm, I'm going to get Killer Keller to do the fashion shoot, and we did. And when okay. we did, that's how. It's good. That's how we. Are you? I'm always front magazine that one. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. I'm, I'm always sort of like looking around all the time, even now. Who's Who's good for brands to partner with? Who's mm. who's going to benefit the magazine if you're in it? Who's going to fit fit 
with the audience. Mm. I've got no sort of corporate training on all that stuff, but on marketing or But that's what PR. makes it beautiful. That's... But it's, it's like, you know, it was like, oh, yeah, let's... I remember thinking, because before my time on the magazine, th- the fashion pages, it was like book a model, dress him up, stand him by a car, make him look a bit laddie, mm. that's it. But then I, th- I started to think, oh, let's get, let's get people of, of, of cultural relevance to be the models. And I remember getting you in mm. and it was like suddenly sort of like made sense before social media and before the world of influencers. Became always. Thing, like, yeah. And I remember, do, yeah, like did stuff with whoever was hot at that time, we'd, we'd shoot them, um, whether, whether it was like boxers, artists. Mm. So that's how that, I just kept just kept myself excited. It's it wasn't, it wasn't, though, man. It wasn't like, it wasn't like um, I had a, big corporate office telling me to do certain hit certain pillars of the audience i just used to, i was just a lad i lived uh, all my life leading up to getting that job i'd sort of done the degree in 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 everything whether that's yeah, yeah. you know like <laughs> fast track doing doing all the the courses yeah. which was you know uh, everything you need to do to the max mm. in order to know everything about everything when it comes to being being a lad and and my speciality was more how to present yourself if you're this if you're that and um and yeah so it was just it was nuts and then and then one thing led to another and I used to get I used to get around that time when the mags were going crazy um I used to always get brands streetwear brands mainly that would say oh yeah Offer me backhanders and stuff, you know, like so they wear the clothes, yeah, yeah, you know, like um, to to um, you know, I do like a a brand of the month or 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 fifty of the best t shirts, which which would I nice. do anyway. Yeah. So um, brands used to always offer me sort of like back, and I used to think, no, no, that's I would never do that because I'm so like loyal to the core, you know, like mm. this, oh, anyone we. We were like a little family, and anyone that um, would would kind of um, there was like unwritten rules of stuff you couldn't do. It was like, and that was one you of wouldn't them. sleep with someone's sister, or you know, you, you would not. You get a sample in mm. from a brand, you wouldn't sell it. You'd mm-hmm. give it away. You know, we'd always had freebies, but we wouldn't take the piss. But what happened is, like, the more music videos I got, and the more the more outside work I got. I just thought, fuck it, I'm going to go freelance. I'm going to mm. leave the mag and I'm going to suck up all this extra work that's coming around um, and just work from home. And then when I got those sort of like backhander opportunities, I thought, well, I haven't even got a boss anymore, really. I, I'm just me. Mm-hmm. So if someone's offering me 200 quid for me to do this thing, just... Well, I'll, it's almost like I an would, influence. I would, so, you know. I would do that anyway. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to put welly boots or... or Fucking bowler hat in 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 nuts Tom magazine. skirts and things like that. Yeah. So so, but then I thought, hang on a minute. That's that's just what PR companies do. They mm. take brands' money, and they say, yeah, we'll get them on cool people for you. And Bing. I thought, hang on a minute. Yeah. I just need a logo, and a name, um, and <laughs> I've got myself. So I've got myself a PR company. What a natural progression. And it was like because it got to the point where I was dressing people of like influence, um, doing doing stuff for you know quite quite big names at the time and a PR company would go oh Rich thanks for getting us on on XYZ rapper hmm. keep, do you want to keep the jeans and I'd go oh not really what are the jeans worth about 150 quid I'd rather you give me 150 quid because it got to the age where it was like I need a car I need a hmm. I'm thinking about setting up a family or not. I've got everything I wanted like all the trainers jeans computer games that I'd get for free, mm. but I actually haven't got the things that are going to make me progress in life, like Yo. money, money. You know, you like hear I'm, this, people. A lot of, hear a this? Lot of, and so, like, I used to go to work, um, and my desk was a mountain of free stuff, like whether it was like Red Wing boots, Dr. Martins, whether it was every aftershave you could ever imagine, anything free. Like, mm. in in the whole office was a mountain of 
books, computer Whoa. games, pornos, anything you wanted for free, you could have it. But we would just give it away, like, yeah. blah, 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 blah. But it was only really until I started realising when I was freelance that all these things are an asset. Like, um, right. they're, they're worth, but they're worth nothing at the same time. They're cool. Mm. But you want a mortgage or you want to buy a car, you want to yeah. buy, your, Rolex, buy, your, it, buy yeah. your kids. <laughs> you, you need to, uh, like, all these influencers that get that, you know, the free, free shit, you, you, you need to turn that into money somehow. And, and um, you know, brands ploy, ploy you with... The good, know, good. Stuff, but, like, sometimes it can work. Like, you know, today... Yeah. You come down, you got Again. some free stuff. It it works. Yeah, like sometimes watching. it works, but like there's a lot of wastage that goes on. You know, I like can imagine. shit stuff. You end up with pair, of, pair, you know, twenty pairs of Birkenstocks when you wouldn't normally wear them. Do you know what I mean? It's like even you would wear fifty yeah. pair, fifty aftershaves. I've still got stuff in my loft from when was that? Like two thousand and three or something? <laughs> two thousand and four. I've still got a backlog of freebies in my mum's loft and my loft. No shit. No way. Of, of from the, from the, from those days. Stop it. This could be like some like Del Boy Only Fools and Horses timepiece in there. No, no, but you know. but um, but this is what the influencers are doing now. Like, I mean, I'm I'm. There's people out there right now that are living that life. Someone like Kish Cash. Someone like mm. uh, Kitty Cowell or yeah, big or, up Kitty, big up yeah, Kish yeah, Cash. Yeah, yeah. These are Don Jam. Both amazing people. Um, mm. But they're getting stuff to their door every day because yeah. they're living that life now through the digital world. So um, unless you, I mean, it, it's great getting a pair of trainers every day mm. to your thing, but uh, the clever ones will <clears throat> have a um, an output to that. Do you know what I mean? They they got stuff coming in. So what would that be though? What we what I mean, we're now talking from a from a you know at the head of the table here talking about. Actions and things that I think probably been tried I, and tested by I think, yourself. I think I, I, I wouldn't want to. I think there's a lot of um, clever. I hope there's a lot of clever influencer type people out there because they're going to get every day they go to the door. Mm. There's 150 pairs of trainers. There's a 200 quid jacket. Yeah. The PR companies give, 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 give. Mm. They've written them off. Um, you've got to play the game. You have to. Thanks. Mm. Thanks. Thanks, Barber, for the jacket. Oh, thanks, uh, Moe, for the trip to yeah, Paris. Yeah, yeah. You have, that's what they want. They want, they want, that. they, want. So they yeah. want a picture of you wearing Dr. Martens. They want a picture of you wearing this shit. But then what you do from that moment on is you're left there with a 200 pair, pair of trainers. You, you're left there with a 200 pair of trainers, which you can flip probably to 400, 500 quid in a, in a six months' time. And they, they, I, I, I won't say exactly the the methods that I would suggest, but yeah, might be have, to find out yourself. I have, <laughs> I have, you know, seen artists and I, I have heard of um, freelance journalists that have, um, you know, discovered for themselves how how to um, monetize that that um, flow of assets that come in, into their life. Really? And, yeah, I mean, a, a lot of artists, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of um, playing the... It's a, it's a, you're playing this game, you know, that the PR companies and the brands want um, Skepta to, to wear something desperate for... Mm. for desperate for um, a, a, someone to wear... So keen, yeah. So desperate. We, you know, they've got targets to hit. You know, we, we need um, X amount of... Grime, rappers, mm. artists, influential people. This month must, you know, they've got to do reports. It's really insane. so. They they just need those visuals um, to drive their brand. And what happens to the um, the actual products? A lot of the time, it's a very big waste. Um, whether it's headphones, whether it's mm. phones, um, I can only speak for what what it was like when I was. Um, before Instagram, I was, I suppose, that person that they wanted to... With a plug. To, to, yeah. But now um, I'm on the other end of the, the fence trying to get my brands on influential people. And it, it, it's, it's a mutual respect. 
you don't want if I if I lent you that if I gave you that jacket mm. and then I saw it on Depop fuming I'd be fuming <laughs> is I think our agency is you know we've got a bit of a a respect thing mm. um, if I saw this jacket in Peckham car boot sale <laughs> in two years would I be bothered not really like it's, you know, of course, it's, it's it? like I know you've had your wear out of it I mm. know you've done your thing but um, it does happen. A lot of people take the piss, and it's just authentic. They get blacklisted. Some people come into into the PR world, and they'll walk around and they'll say, "Oh, oh I love this. I love this. I love this." But they're they're only really looking at it mm. as a, as a two hundred pound asset, mm-hmm. and they're thinking, "I'm going to sell you. I'm going to sell <laughs> you. I'm going to or or make some money I, I, or or or." <clears throat> You know, and you can see right through it. You can see can right you? through it. Yeah, I can see right through it. Like people, people going, people, people. You know, it's the week. Oh man, we, you must see we, that all the time. You know, I, and I see people come and go. But the, the, if if you if you want, the, there's ways of doing it, keeping it on the low down, mm. and it is what it is. But but you also about it's also about targeting the right artists for the right yeah, brands yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you don't you almost like weed out yeah, those yeah, kind of yeah, people yeah 100% too. like 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 yeah. you know someone who gets a certain brand you know you know someone who who understands uh uh Carl Carney or or Fubu or or an old school brand when we mm. we've worked with like Champion Fila Kappa all the rest of it. And, oh man, you've and, worked with and, so many. And for you, real. you know, you know, you know, piss takers, and you know, people who who generally want it. Mm. But you can't you can't get away from certain people. You know, are getting free shit, literally like a tsunami to their mm. door every day. Like like I mean, a Maya Jama, for instance. I bet she gets a yeah, shit ton yeah, of stuff yeah, yeah. from McDonald's. I mean, to I mean, like oh, I remember what. Is it I mean, worth it? Is it worth it if it's for? I mean, that I, mem- scale? I remember. I'm, I mean, the brands just want an image for their mm. social media now. So that's, any that's, picture that's, will that's do. Any picture, any picture. Like that's uh, what they want. They want if you, you know. I remember, like I said, I remember way back, and I'm sure it still happens now. Going to a gig because I was styling a band. I go. I look at. I look at the. I'd get there. Mm. I'd maybe get to Shepherd's Bush, or I'd get to like Coco, and. Some PR person had already got there before me because they knew this person was performing, and they've left a box outside um, the changing rooms. Like yeah. um, they've wormed their way in or whatever. And, I, and people slight even my my team sometimes just slip the back door through Brixton Academy, and and you can put you can put um, covert operations yeah, yeah, in yeah, here. Yeah, PR people wow. and PR people are just personable. Cool people. There's so, a documentary in that. Yeah, I swear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's loads of times where we just, you know, slip into gigs Operation with a suitcase brand. with a suitcase and a rail, and then you've got. I remember getting a pretty shit brand T-shirt on. Um, oh, oh fuck! Um, fuck! Travis Scott. Oh no way! And, yeah, yeah. Way back, like way, way back. He's playing at um, Brixton Academy, and. It was like just a, sh- oh. it was a shit brand. I won't say brand it was, but someone you know. Oh, he was a stylist in a suitcase, rail in through the back door. Um, we knew someone who was supporting, so go and say hello to them. And then ooh, opposite, blah blah blah, bump into it, and it's like, oh yeah, this t-shirt. Good, and it's it? and it's like they don't really know what brands are what because they come to this Love country. Love it. Love it. But yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. I just is that exciting? That that must excite you. Yeah, I mean, like. There's two sides. I mean, there's a lot of different sides to what I do on a day-to-day basis. I'm trying to help. You know, we've got the agency and we help brands develop. Um, and we've been we've been doing that for 15 years. You know, what I mean, we are, mm. we take on brands that we we feel really passionate about and feel have got room to to grow. And then we develop them with creative and develop them with. Um, product placement. We mm. sometimes do the social media. Sometimes do events, collaborations. So that's like the the agency, and then um, me personally, I I kind of get involved um, on the creative direction of the brand quite often before they come to the agency. Mm. So um, 
any problems that need fixing beforehand, then we'll, we'll do that. And then on a bigger um, level, we'll do global campaigns um, for brands. And it's like, yeah, you said about pressure. It, I just never feel the pressure on that. If it's, if it's, if it's talking at a wedding or if it's, if it's get, having to speak to police or that's pressure for me. Mm. But pressure, because it's just the only thing I know about. So it's it's actually not pressure at all. Mm. It's a, it's just no so, anxiety. No, no. no. I mean, no I'm thinking. a really. I've suffered with anxiety all my life, mm. um, uh, and it's the only thing I know. So when it went, my worst anxiety was at school when the teacher used to make us read out loud. Oh God, and that's the worst shit. Richard, <sighs> two pages of two pages of this, and <laughs> and I used to get so nervous because yeah. I was like, I knew I'd make mistakes and people take the piss, and that was really, really. And then it, as it got older, it's like, oh, this mm. this this guy's after you, Rich. This guy's after you, oh, mm. blah, blah. and it, but when it comes to like, I would just bury my head. I would just always be. Collecting the coins like 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 Sonic, listening to NWA, listening to rave, listening to mm. watching watching rave videos, watching breakdance videos, watching um, keep looking around at everywhere, very observant. What you wear and what I want to fit in. So, mm -hmm. you know, my mates are watching the football there or hooligans. I oh, know. Let's go there. I'm fine. I'll wear this. I wear Aqua Scooter. I can wear mm. uh, Stone Island. I can wear a bit of this, and I fit in. So, I think because because. My secondary school was um, was quite tough. I was really fucking skinny, and we had not only the the year bully, we had the school bully in my class. Oh um, God! And we had to we had to. It was like having like being on the same wing as Charles Bronson. You had to <laughs> you had to sort of deal with it mm. but actually it was a blessing because we we were like a we were like a family although mm. we give it was like you know like an ab abusive parent we were a family so mm. it was, we had a connection but i had to learn how to how to fit in and not mm. you know get hit to gym learn how to defend myself um you know if someone took the piss i ended up fighting back so eventually we became one of him, which wasn't, which wasn't necessarily a good thing, but it meant that I we told you he's rock and roll. It was it we no. you know it ended up being like okay cool, um, it you know just about fitting in, and mm. that's just um you know you, as you get older you don't want to go to a pub and it's like the mm. like ID when it's like oh, fucking who's that you know it's yeah. you want to fit in slip in and then right okay cool um mm. you know and I I I'd say it to my sons now they're going through the similar thing. Um, and it's it's tough. Like, and yeah. I don't know what I, I actually don't know whether um, that was a well, that was a good or bad thing because when you do st stand up to to bullies and and start acting like them, mm. it just attracts people who want to take you down. Yeah, it attracts it's true. More and more people, and it's the same in it's the same in the professional world. The minute you start Pandering. standing up to Brands, oh yeah, you need to pay me more, blah blah blah. Or you need to, you know, you know, this this you need to, um, or you're standing up to record labels, you're standing up to the corporates, then other creatives want to take you down. Other, you know, of course. And and it's that whole cancel culture now. It's like, yeah, you make a little bit of success for you, and the people want to gun you down. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I've I've found it's difficult. It takes a lot so, of bravery, especially with fashion as well. Sometimes even the simplest thing you change to switch up, it leaves you. Reasonably exposed, quite vulnerable. I mean, we're not, you know, inventing the wheel here. Hundred percent, you know, hundred percent. Like, it takes and a lot of guts. And I think, I think, um, what I learned from my younger days of fighting my way through everything with 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 aggression and 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 arrogance and and sort of um, violence, mm. um, and frustration. I learned that as later on in life. That's not. That's if you if you if you do that in business, then there's no, there's not really any room to have enemies. Mm. 
which means you kind of have to suck it up sometimes. But, um, you know, there's been many times running Rich London where we've done a great job for a client and the client leaves to go to another brand and two years later he'll, he'll call back and say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm now at this brand. You have to just be nice. You have to be nice, you have to be honest, you have to be authentic. So... It's longevity, that's it, what longevity yeah, yeah, does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, mean, I think that's, you know, what we were saying earlier about there's not many people I can think of other than, well, there's a handful of people that have been relevant in the in this industry, whether it's music, fashion, art, mm. whatever it is in the creative world, that have been around as long as yourself um, and around what I've been doing. There's certain people, Kish Cash, um, I can't really, I can't really name that many to mm -hmm. be honest, because because yeah, a lot of them, what happens is. Everyone loves music when they're young. Everyone loves fashion when they're young. Everyone loves being creative. But you have these things that get in the way, like icebergs, like mm. a job. You mm. need to start paying for shit. You need a you need a house. You need a survival's key. You need you, you get a survival's key. You man. get a you get a girl, and then eventually you want to get married. She, she's going to want a fancy wedding mm. and kids, mortgage, and it's. A lot dog, of, a lot car. of the dog, car, yeah. anything, just just new anything. Um, and that free jeans and free trainers don't pay the bills. Dog and the mustard, and yeah. you have to just, you just have to just stay consistent. But you're aware of that, and as a PR um, CEO, you, you, that that holds a lot of weight to artists like myself and others that that. Sometimes, like you say, the, the cheap tricks of it all and the, the easy wins for a lot of PR companies is just to get something on anybody's back mm. without actually considering the artists themselves, right? Yeah, I mean, like, it's changed a lot in the last... I mean, it's always changing, but, like, with social media, it was, OK, let's get this let's get this brand mm. on someone who's got 100,000 followers mm. or let's, two, a million mm. 10 million, you know, it's like, oh, my God, you've got... S but but now numbers... Ah, numbers are becoming less meaningful because it's... So what is it then? What is it that, so that they're like, aiming for? It's, it's just that... So if you've got... I know a lot of people that have got... You can have 400,000 followers and you can be in prison. You could have been in prison for two years because mm -hmm. social media has been going a long time now. <laughs> you, you almost need an MOT, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see, let's see if you, you know, are you really an influencer still because you're in prison and mm -hmm. you're an alcoholic? Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's people that have got a thousand followers that are cooler than people mm. that... I've got 200,000 followers because your audience may be your audience because you take your shirt off a lot. And that's that doesn't mean you're cool. It just means you're sexy. Mm. Or that, means you're, that means you're... Numbers, people buy followers, people buy bots, people buy, yeah, buy their way. And, and you really can't... So the way we... You have to... It's like... In the olden days, you had to meet someone and, mm. and have a an interview or you had to have a first date to really get mm. to know someone. And even someone someone said, oh, yeah, 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 uh, Killer Keller, he's really cool, like, he's, he's cool. You couldn't just look at a picture and a number mm. and then just go, okay, you have to meet someone, you have to see what they're about. And that's that's now with social media what you have to do. They might have numbers, but you have to go into their social media, see what they're about, see if everything matches up. Does the mm. website match up with the actual level of creativity of the music? And and it's easy to spot now, especially with record labels and bands. They get their blue tick straight away and it, hang on a minute. That doesn't, doesn't, look, not, right, doesn't, right. look, doesn't yeah. look right. And it just, if you can see it doesn't look right, we can look right close at something and it, look at how many comments. You, know, you can have 100,000 followers, no comments. Mm. It doesn't look right. It, uh, 
You can look at how many likes versus how many times they post a week. You can look at lots of different things. There's no science to it other mm. than other than I can look at someone and someone can say, oh, yeah, yeah, Killer Killer is really cool. But I can say, oh, my God, he's got a pair of... I can just I mm. could just look at one element of what you're wearing, and I could I could. Nah, it's not fully authentic mm-hmm. because because you wouldn't be wearing an as the George jacket. Exactly. You know what I mean, exactly. Like, you might I have everything. You, know, you got you got but Salomon. Bit, you got Stussy. You yeah. got this. You got the. Uh, but hang on a minute. He's got a. He's got this. Off brand business. Shit. Now I can just yeah. see. Well, I can just see the little as the George tag around the back. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Totally. It's not. It's not happening. You can tell. And, and you can it, clock, and can't you? Yeah. You can. You can see it with a lot as you get older. Mm. Those little, those, those little, those little chinks they get more obvious. A lot of a lot of my friends' dads used to say to me, "Oh, Rich, Rich, oh, I know you do this fashion stuff. You know, I'd get, how'd you get me a wardrobe? You know, I want to look a bit cooler, blah blah blah." And it's harder with the older guys because their confidence level isn't mm. high enough to pull off red trainers or. You know, a, a co- yeah. coordinate top bottom stussy tracks. So yeah, well, the resting dad face doesn't help. It, it, but, it, it, you it, know, and one little tiny mistake can just throw yeah, the whole look break off. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, Bless one, it. whether it's mm. style of glasses, whether you've, whatever. But that's why fashion is so. It's like fashion is just there to be there to push people away. It's if you're in it and you can survive in it, that's great. But as as you get older, the the water gets deeper, and mm. it's like fuck, I can't keep up anymore. And it's and and it's over. You just there's no fake in it. You can't say, oh yeah, you can't get a stylist. You can't. Mm. You know, a lot of a lot of a lot of famous old people they'll have a stylist for their appearances. Mm. But if you saw them on a Sunday afternoon, they look fucking yeah, shit. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. just. Um, and uh, it's the same with a lot of artists, but only the really authentic people, like you on a Sunday afternoon, it look cool. It's like it's it's, always it's, on, baby. It's, always it's, on. It's, uh, it's just part of your DNA, isn't it? Mm, it's like it is, and a, yeah. a lot of people that are on this this podcast as well. It's like mm. um, they don't let their guard down. No. They, they can't. You know, it's about it's about okay, cool. Let's see, let's see. You know, Rich is forty five. How come he's? Let's see him. He's on this podcast. Yeah, I, I can. Let people in. Look at my dirty laundry. Look mm. at my look at my drawers. You're not going to find mm-hmm. any um, any shit on me because yeah. I I think these days it's about any shit I've got. I'll tell you anyway. Mm. Um, Transparency was yeah, and that's authenticity. Like, and, and if you're hiding anything these days, you know that's why a lot of brands are just, especially with the, with when the lockdown was happening, a lot of brands screwed because. Mm. Their Instagram, well, their TikTok becomes became their shop window. The uh. shops were shut down, so their in, their Instagram live or whatever that became their shop window. And actually, they didn't know how to do it. Uh-huh. So it was like shit. When we got agencies doing this, agencies doing that, agencies doing that, we didn't know how to do it. No, we, oh. We've got a shop. Our sh- so it's like that's where you know brands like Cortez and. Mm. Um, uh, palace brands yeah. that are just inherently who they say they are mm. um, and reactive as yeah, well. They yeah, just, they just, they just, they just, they've got nothing to hide. They got, they've got no, no smoke screens. I mean, mm. when they sell, you know, when 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 Palace eventually sells to a multi-million pound um, company somewhere mm, and, mm. and they all retire, then that's when the shit happens because mm. you've got to keep up that coolness. Yeah. Um yeah. and you're in a you're in a world um uh like Supreme. You know, yeah. Supreme Supreme's felt the backlash of of um you know selling mm. um selling and, and it's just fucking it's dog eat dog. It is a dog eat dog world. It is it is a hundred percent dog eat dog. Uh, but if you're a, if you're a dog with. If you if you were born with sharp teeth, then it's fine. <laughs> it's it's a. Uh, or you learn how to sharpen your teeth, then it's then it's it's fine. But there's so many things along the way: drink, drugs, um, relationships, bills, mortgage, cars, all there to sort of 
push you out, mm. like push you out. Fashion and youth mm. culture, they don't want old people in it. They don't want old people in. It. They don't want old people pretending to be in in it. And young people don't want old people in it. But mm. if you can, you know, you could go to a gig and it'd be fine mm. because you're still fitting in. You're still yeah. culturally relevant. Um, and weirdly, like, I still skate sometimes. And, and my, I love that you still my, skate. My, my two kids now skate. And my dream was always if I had a boy that I could teach him how to kickflip or, mm. or, you know, impossible or do at least teach him how to ollie. Mm. And I've done that. And it's like, and the other day, Dad, um, uh, Dylan was like, oh, Dad, take me to, me and my mates, take me down to Bay 66. And uh, yeah, 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 cool. And I was like, would you mind if I skate? And yeah, yeah, no, no, of course. And and it was just like, brilliant. Oh, because God, that's good. Because it's like, and his mates were in the back of the car mm. and one of them said, are you going to have a go, Rich? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, and, he, and he said something like, what are you going to do? Hire a board? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Jeez. I've got a board in the back, you prick. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and it, it's just like, it's, I feel like I'm you know, in an unusual position where you know, my dad, you know, rest his soul, was great, but was never into anything I was into. He thought, even if I wore denim, I was a troublemaker <laughs> and um, <laughs> wanted me to be an engineer. I wouldn't have. I didn't even want him to pick me up from school, let alone, <laughs> let let alone um, yeah. come skate with me. So, I get it. So, you know, it's it's um, it's great to be able to, and unusual to be able to sort of have that relationship with my kids now and and we've got this I, I remember going to New York recently and we were in the Visu shop and and my older boy was mm. like fuck oh, look at this look at this dad it's like 80 quid cap and I was like fuck that's steep for a cap that's, that's a lot like, for a cap bro. A, lot, a lot for a cap right and he tried it on and I said it looks good though and I went it looks all right doesn't it and then and we had like spending money all the rest of it and then Max, my younger boy, tried it on. Looks all right, doesn't it? So my missus would have gone, 80 quid for a fucking cap? That's ridiculous. Mm. And we went, well, if we if we split it three ways... Then we it, share it. So we've basically got this little communal wardrobe now, a little WhatsApp group, and I borrow my boy's um, Air 95s and he'd borrow my... I can't borrow, cope. That borrow, is amazing. Borrow my, you know, and it's like, it's... It's just really nice. They're That's always... the coolest shit. That's <laughs> total fatherhood it's, it, it, going it, it, on here. It's, it's, it's just... Fashion um, in fatherhood. Come on, guys. What's going on? No, I mean... It, Amazing. It, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a you know, it's, I remember I remember seeing... Um, it was my dream, like, to have that scenario. And I remember thinking... I remember watching there was a documentary with Hulk Hogan, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, oh, Hulk Hogan, so cool. Got his massive house, everything. He's got massive, all these cars. And I remember on the documentary, Hulk Hogan's son was embarrassed of his dad and and mm. wouldn't wouldn't none of this. Like it was mm -hmm. like, and I thought, oh. fuck, I'm doomed. Like <laughs> if 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 he doesn't like his dad and his dad's Hulk Hogan, what the fuck? Oh, fuck, what the fuck I is the rules? But do. I think it's just like, you know, being a dad is is is. You know, it's a balance. Like, I don't want him to be, I don't want him to be like I was when I was really young, you know, like teens and stuff. But who knows? No, actually, it's funny because um, he's really, the older boy's really good at writing, really mm. good at graph. And I got him a big plasterboard for the back garden to practice on, mm. bought him some pens nice. and stuff. And I thought it was cool. I thought, oh, this is cool. I'm being a cool dad. And, uh, and then my next door neighbour, who's like the local park warden, messaged me oh. and said, basically it tag, tagged everywhere, tagged everywhere around the skate park. And it's really good, actually, to be fair. Like, yeah, he's tough. Good, yeah. good, good, good. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, man, it's like, so it's, but it's a balance, you know, you don't want to be the, the, you still got a discipline. Discipline week. A little bit, you know what I mean? And, and um, education, all that sort of stuff, but... 
Yeah, man. It's it's education uh, of life, isn't it? Yeah, huh? yeah. I think, I think of life. But you know, I think having met you this last couple of days and today, mm. I think one of the trickiest things about this industry, whether you're whether you're an artist, whether you're a breaker, whether you're a DJ or a fashion mm. stylist, makeup artist, it's like longevity. Mm. Like your and your you've been doing cool stuff you know, you're not on the payroll i don't, mm. I don't no. think for anywhere like uh, <laughs> no yeah, yeah sometimes i wish leave a comment below people <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i wish i was sometimes i wish like yeah. i see people have got company cars and private health care mm. and all this x amount of organized time off mm. a year and it's like fuck mm. it, it, it is sometimes appealing but at the same time you can't do this, you know. What is it like? Night, eight man. o'clock at night, and you're just yeah. doing, doing this setup in your own house. Like it's amazing. Keep it alive, man. You just, you just have to. You just have to have that drive. Once you, once you say to yourself, "I don't want to work for anyone yeah. else," um, yeah. you still have to work for other people, but yeah. you just have to just be hungry for the next thing. Yeah. You know, next, next, next job. Um, and keep doing what you love doing, isn't it? It's a fucking great sense of And if you, if there's something else that you want to do, then just do that as well. Yeah. And, and um, yeah. You know what I mean? And I wish everyone could see this setup because it's like, <laughs> it's like the ultimate, fuck this, I'm going to get this done setup. Yeah, man. And it, <laughs> it really is like, fuck, I, I honestly, I thought you had a studio or something, like an actual. <laughs> You know, so hats off, mate. My brother. Hats off, mate. It's been a pleasure having you on, man. And honestly, this is not going to be the the last time. We have to come back. There's so much more to dial in on this gentleman and, of course, the fashion world that changes every quarter. Um, Brother, thank you so much. That's all right, man. That's all right. That's all right. And... Check out if you well, check out Rich London. Yeah, my exactly. my agency. Check out Rich London. Um, yeah, man. It's last one, brother. Killer Killer podcast. Out like in was out of fashion. Rich PR inside the place. No games. Um, sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And of course, the crime don't pay. And neither do they. So get involved. More podcasts on the way. All right. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Stay lucky, people. Peace. Yeah. Wow.